coast ain't what it used to be. Many beaches that once were large and expensive are now chintzy little things. The cliff sides have also been eroded away. Some of the old beach houses can still be seen in their original locations. Why did erosion suddenly speed up? And why does it seem to be slowing down now? One theory is that the beaches were suddenly expanded during the gold rush of the middle 1800s and then quickly eaten away. This sudden expansion would have been a result of hydraulic mining in which the banks of rivers were blasted into the rivers themselves. This process added an estimated 2 billion tons of earth into the valley rivers. Although such an increase in sediment would have significantly enlarged beaches, only a negligible amount ever reach the open ocean. So, scratch that theory. Gold! Eureka! I found it! I found it! Another theory explains the increased erosion by an increase in the population of sea urchins. This sticky problem occurred when the fur traders killed off almost all the sea otters. Now, otters eat urchins, eat kelp, eat waves. The slaughter of the otter removed one of the urchin's prime predators, leaving it free to graze sea kelp. Normally unconcerned, this little urchin preferred not to exhibit its eating habits in front of our cameraman and shyly tinkled off from view. <laughs> Sea kelp provides an effective break water, reducing wave size and diminishing erosion. Even the storm breakers of this particular day on this particular beach were lessened by the wall of protective sea kelp. Kelp, kelp, look at all the sea kelp, 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 look at all the sea kelp, 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 look at all the sea kelp, 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 look at all the sea kelp, 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 kelp. Lacking such a natural sea net, the waves at this beach were foiled only by the rocky shore itself. So, what conclusions do you draw from that? You were now. I'm an urchin smasher. Do you smash urchin? Yes, I do. Why do you do that? Because I volunteered along with a couple hundred others. But why smash urchin? Why don't you smash aristocrats? Oh, they're already smashed. Because I like kill. You like what? I, I, I like kill. But you smash urchin, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, why do you do that? I'm an urchin smasher. Are you going out right now to smash her? Yes, I am. Well, I hope you have a smashing success. Urchins! Hey, I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! All you little urchins! I'm gonna get you! 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 I'm gonna get
beds are increasing and erosion is beginning to lessen. Slightly. Yet the battle continues between landowner and the sea. The landowner owns the lot, but the ocean is claiming the mineral rights. Nothing daunted, man has discovered other ways of extending the forces of nature. In 1961, the Pillar Point Breakwater was completed. This big pile of Davenport sandstone acts as a barricade to the surf, the surfer, a roost for the fishermen, while providing a quiet cove for a variety of sea fowl. Mostly gulls, and a few boys, too. But the real purpose of the cove on the inland side of the breakwater is providing a sheltered bay for the boats. However, every wall has two sides. See here, this direction. Yes, sir. One side presents a sheltered bay. The rocks of the wall deflecting the force of the waves and keeping them out. But this energy must go somewhere. And looking the other way, we see that the energy of the waves are deflected to the point of intersection between the wall and the shore. That is right, Jar. Ah, but it is true. Watch the waves. Before 1961, Half Moon Bay formed a clean geometric arc after construction of the breakwater. Deflected wave energy increased erosion directly south of the wall, while no erosion has been allowed to the north. Closer up, we see that deflected wave energy has eaten away a chunk of the shore, already dangerously close to Highway 1. Today, nearby Mirada Road no longer skirts the ocean front, it is the ocean front, forming a series of asphalt-topped sea stacks. All of this erosion has taken place in the last 11 years. The coast highway is clearly headed for deep water. The problem facing the other side of the wall can be seen after traveling one of the many public maintained county roads. Your highway taxes at work. Three streams enter the cove inside the breakwater. The silt and the sand carried by these streams has no way of escaping out of the cove due to the lack of waves and lack of currents caused by the breakwater. The cove is gradually being filled up by these sediments. In the process of filling the cove, some interesting features are being created. Interesting to seagulls and interesting to clamors. Another problem is caused by the oblique approach of waves in towards the shore. Some of the water thrown forward is deflected and moves laterally, parallel to the shore. Thusly, the 
the material which forms beaches is deposited by this offshore current, the material itself coming mostly from river deposition. The pillar point breakwater is acting as a catch for this material deposited from streams and being brought down by the offshore current. And instead of being deposited on beaches further south, it is being built up around the wall and being carried inside of the wall into the cove itself through the gap theoretically reserved for only water and boats. Soon, the cove, the gap, and the inside of the wall will have to be dredged. A proposal has been proposed to build an even larger breakwater at an estimated cost of $9.6 million. This would deflect more energy and barricade more surfers, roost more fishermen and seagulls, and clams.